Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A. About a week ago now, I went on Instagram and asked you guys to ask me questions and I got plenty of questions and now I am going to answer them. So, yep, pretty self-explanatory. Let's get right into it. First question. Am I still with my boyfriend? Yes. Yes, I am. We are still together. We have been together for nine months and we are rock freaking solid. Do you or did you have trans friends? I do have trans friends, although my social life is not very active right now, um, so I don't see them as much, but I did and do still have trans friends. Favorite TV show right now? Um, I am watching Lost with Jason. It is not his first time watching it, but it is my first time watching it, and I'm pretty into it. Um, some parts of that show are slower and more boring than others, um, but I like it. I like how much you have to suspend your belief and just kind of let things happen and kind of, you know, not necessarily always expect them to be explained. I actually think that that's kind of genius. What is my favorite compliment? Probably that I'm compelling. I really like when people say that I'm compelling or think I'm interesting. Um, or that I'm smart. That's huge. Yeah, probably that I'm smart. <laughs> How is detransitioning going? Um, I got this question a lot in different forms and it's going really well. Um, I like haven't done a lot of the logistical legal changes stuff because I procrastinate, but in terms of the social aspect and everything, it really couldn't be better. Favorite philosopher of all time? The philosopher that I have probably enjoyed reading the most, honestly, is Nietzsche. <laughs> um, I, when I read Beyond Good and Evil, there were a lot of moments where I had realized that I had had these thoughts before, but to hear them articulated um, by, you know, this modern existentialist, those are just really cool moments. Like, I had had these thoughts before and I, they felt like original thoughts to me, but I knew that they probably weren't and evidently they're not. But yeah, Nietzsche is my favorite one to read. And then Spinoza's uh, view of God, I really like, um, but I'm also kind of in a love-hate relationship with Spinoza right now because I'm writing my final paper on him. And a lot of times it's like, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> do I have any pets? Yes, I do. They're usually in the background of my videos. That's Taco over there, um, essing his own D. And then Claude is right here. This is baby Claude, and he is a golden doodle Eskimo. He is three years old, Taco is two years old. Current favorite items, shows, music. Um, I have a lot of favorite items. I'm a very materialistic person, so I don't even know how to answer that. Um, and favorite show, I already answered music. Um, usually when people ask who my favorite artists are, I say Fleet Foxes, Father John Misty, Super Tramp, The Beatles, Mamas and the Papas, um, Oscar Peterson. Debussy, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Bon Iver, Paul McCartney. I guess that's enough artists. <laughs> happiest early memory and happiest current memory. Oh, I mean, my memory, I remember almost everything that's ever happened to me and my memory goes back to like age one. Uh, so that's really, really hard. Early memory? Being in the womb, I guess. <laughs> it's probably when I was happiest. The happiest current memory is uh, literally every moment that I've spent with Jason. How is your relationship with yourself after detransitioning? Much better. Um, just the fact that I am no longer fighting against my natural state and my biology is just, that reconciliation is really, really significant in terms of my relationship with myself. I am still a very, very, very self-critical person, and I probably always will be. Um, 
I have very high standards for myself, but also I don't think I'm good enough to do anything. So I kind of at the same time have very low standards for myself and that kind of creates a very antagonistic relationship with myself. But that's gonna happen no matter what gender I am. Detransitioning has done nothing but good for me. Where do I see myself in five years? Uh, married to Jason, probably still living in the Midwest, and probably still online, either still making YouTube videos or doing freelance writing, um, and maybe with a young child or pregnant, I don't know. Thoughts on people like Kanye West and Lohanthony who had a public journey with Christ. Um, with Kanye West, I, all I can say about that is that I really liked his album, uh, Jesus is King. Lohanthony, I remember looking into that and feeling very, like, very interested. I really wanted, I actually emailed him and asked him if he wanted to be on my channel because I wanted to talk to him about it. Um, and pretty, you know, disappointed in most of the people's response because people were like, you know, Oh, he must have, he, people were just making up narratives about him going to conversion therapy when there's literally no evidence that that happened. And he was, he, you know, just found a relationship in Christ. And I don't, I mean, and is cel celibate. I don't think it's a really sad situation. I think it would be really, really hard to be celibate, but more power to him. The most asked question that I got is regarding my faith, and honestly, I thought about just not addressing it, but if I'm being honest, the whole reason why I'm filming this Q&A is so that I can address it, because I didn't want to make an entire video about it. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I can't call myself a Christian anymore because I no longer believe that Jesus is the savior of the world and I no longer believe in the Bible as the ultimate truth of reality. And if I'm being honest, I'm not sure I ever really did. Or if I, I, I'm not sure that my faith was ever strong enough to really stake my life on that. Um, I, my Christian experience, which lasted from, I wanna say, April of last year to, I think I lost my faith in around December is when I was really like, I can't, I really can't say I'm a Christian anymore. So, you know, it was about eight months of being Christian and that experience was significant and beautiful and real. And I am not here to disparage anyone else for being Christian, but I, you know, I have to be honest, I, you know, made a video saying that I had found Christ and, um, you know, sort of branded myself as somebody who detransitioned because of finding God. And I do think that in a sense, my detransition was a religious experience. And, and I really have been dreading addressing this and I've been putting it off since December because I often get comments saying that I uh, seem to be someone who is very, has very flimsy beliefs and changes their mind a lot. And you know what? I do, I am someone who changes their mind a lot. I am someone who's like, it is difficult for me to trust myself. And I take my, you know, I take my life very seriously and I take my decisions very seriously. If I'm gonna be a Christian, I want to be a Christian. I do not want to have a sort of loose definition of Christianity that I follow solely based on my feelings. Um, and there were and are several verses in the Bible that I don't agree with. Uh, for example, I don't think there's anything wrong with homosexuality. And I remember really, really like being agonized over that. I would constantly pray for, you know, the Lord to like fill me with his Holy Spirit and like lead me according to his Holy Spirit and change my mm -hmm. desires and all of that. Um, but I never was like, I can't get myself to really like be grieved by the fact that people are, are gay. 
um, or the fact that, I don't know, women can be pastors. A lot of the stuff that Paul said, I don't agree with. I also don't agree that, I don't believe that the earth was made in seven days. And I found myself sort of, you know, trying to get myself mm-hmm. to justify and say like, oh, well, in a cultural context, you know, God isn't actually uh, against homosexuals. And it's like, well, you can't really get out of that. I mean, Romans 126 is like kind of spells it out. Um, yeah. And I wanted to be a Christian who believed that the Bible was literally the word of God and could not be changed. Um, I wanted to be a fundamentalist, honestly. Um, I wanted to have the like joy and security that a lot of fundamentalist Christians have. And I don't think I ever really was sold out to Christ. I really tried. I gave it the old college try. I've been trying for like three years. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was going to get baptized. I never did end up getting baptized. Um, but where is my faith right now? Um, I think the expression, I lost my faith, is accurate. Um, even though it's a very sad sounding expression, I think I was building a sort of faith um, and it just eventually dissolved. So yeah, I no longer pray. I no longer really read scripture. I definitely want to go back and read scripture again just because I think it's a deeply fascinating book. Um, and I think the symbolism of Christ is in a sort of abstract way real. I just don't think it's literally real. Um, and if I'm going to call myself a Christian, I want to be a Christian who believes that it's literally real. Um, and yeah, I, I don't belong to a church. Um, and oh, another thing that I will mention is that Jason was also trying to become a Christian when we met. And that synchronicity and the unlikeliness of, of that and just all the other circumstances of our relationship made it, I guess, more plausible for me to believe that um, God had his hand over me and my relationship. And um, But yeah, we're not Christians. We are not a Christian couple. I do anticipate the majority of the responses to that to be negative, um, but that's okay. I have to tell you the truth because every single time I get a comment on my detransition video that says like, another soul unto Christ, see you in heaven, sister. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> How does Bible study usually go for you? Well, I have not been doing any Bible study, but usually um, you guys are actually sitting on top of a stack of Bibles. I have a lot, I have a lot of Bibles. So a lot of, um, a lot of just, you know, highlighting. I would read like one to two chapters at a time and just, you know, annotate and highlight whenever, you know, uh, I thought something was interesting. I really filled up this Bible. I mean, guys, I really, I was into it. I was, I was into the Bible. I felt like, especially when I was reading the Gospels, I felt like I was going to explode. I do think that in a sense, I fell in love with Jesus and the Gospels and, you know, the idea of the Trinity and yeah, here's, I really marked up Psalm 1. And I marked up the Psalms a lot. What else did I really mark up? Let me go to the Gospels. I think I went crazy on like one page in John. Oh yeah. Yeah, I went, I went absolutely ham on this page. But yeah, I basically just highlight and underline and write random words and then I go back and read it and I don't really know what I was getting at. Worst and best part about being D-trans. Uh, worst part is all of the name stuff. Having your name be some, like, a different gendered name on your ID and in, in my school records they can't change it because I haven't legally changed it yet. So just dealing with all of that logistical crap is probably the most annoying worst part. 
And then the best part is just, I don't know, being a woman, the feeling of like having come through something, the feeling of like completion, the feeling of something coming full circle. What is your partner's Enneagram type? Uh, Jason, like me, is also a four, but he is a four wing three and I am a four wing five. How does one distinguish a good true religion from a fake bad one? Feelings, <laughs> the way you feel about it. Um, whether or not it lines up with your own personal beliefs and attitudes. Honestly, other than that, there's really no objective way to do that, in my opinion. Do I still deal with dysphoria? If so, how do I deal with it? No, I don't. I, I, mean, I mean, I have... The, I, I got another question about if I experience reverse dysphoria, so I guess I'll just answer that. Okay, I guess you could say I, I have reverse dysphoria, but I don't have dysphoria about like wanting to be a man. I feel insecure about my voice and sad about the fact that, you know, I amputated my breasts. Um, and, you know, not thrilled about the fact that I literally grow a beard still. Uh, so, yes and no, I guess. Have you ever thought you were non-binary? If so, did you, how did you realize you weren't? I thought I was non-binary in high school, like before I came out as trans, freshman, sophomore year, I identified as genderqueer, um, and I realized I wasn't because I just, I, I don't know, I never really liked the idea of going by they, them pronouns, or like the idea of being neither male nor female, I didn't really, feel comfortable with that ambiguity. I kind of always just wanted to be one or the other, so. Do you believe that transition works for some people? Yes, evidently, it certainly does. What do you think the root of your dysphoria was? Social pressures um, to be feminine in a very specific, um, unattainable type of way. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably, probably sums it up. Has transition again crossed your mind if so why what stopped you so i think you're asking has the has the idea of retransitioning ever crossed my mind um i've had thoughts about like wanting like wishing i was male again but they're usually very like very quick thoughts you know they don't i've never considered retransitioning seriously I've, I've never considered it um but you know sometimes i have thoughts like I wish I was still a man, but it's usually over arbitrary and superficial things. What's your favorite Starbucks drink? Probably a white mocha, hot, with oat milk. I don't really like Starbucks that much, but like, I still go there. <laughs> what is something that surprised you in the process of detransition? Honestly, just how much I love being a woman and how glad I am to be a woman. Um, I really, like at the beginning of my detransition, when I realized I was going to detransition, I was like, I cannot even conceive of myself as a woman. Like, I'm, this is going to be so, that is going to be so hard to, like, think of myself as a woman. It's going to be so uncomfortable to, like, wear women's clothes and all that. Um, and it has not been hard. It, I actually really enjoy it, and I'm very proud to be a woman, and I, yeah, so probably that, just how easy it's been to just be a woman. I mean, I don't have to do anything. I just have to exist. I'm, I'm a woman. Like, there's nothing I gotta do to prove myself or defend that. It just is. What do you think of radical feminism? I'm very sympathetic to a lot of the um, concerns that radical feminists bring up, uh, like sex segregated spaces. I am sort of sympathetic to the idea of abolishing gender, but I don't really live that out because in a lot of ways I'm a very like evolutionarily typical female. Like I don't, you know, I'm not driven by competition. I kind of just want to be like a stay at home wife and I kind of just want to be a housewife. I'm very, that idea is very appealing to me and I want to have kids and I want to dedicate my life to my family. I'm more interested in people than things. So, you know, in a way, like, and I know that, you know, a lot of radical feminists are very against makeup and I really enjoy makeup. So can't really call myself a radical feminist. Um, and I'm 
Yeah, but I'm interested in the literature and I would like to read more rad femme literature. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty neutral. And I know a lot of rad femmes can be very, very nasty and I'm not really for, I don't, I, I'm not for misgendering trans people um, or vilifying trans people. But I'm sympathetic to the problems that they bring up. Are your boobs growing back with estrogen or are you gonna get a boob job? No, boobs don't grow back. Once you cut them off, you don't get another pair. Um, in terms of getting a boob job, this is definitely something that I have, you know, gone back and forth in my head about. Uh, the only reason I would get a boob job is that it would make wearing clothes, certain clothing items a lot easier. Um, I can't really wear anything very low cut. I can't really wear anything that's even a little bit low cut or like wide neck because I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I wear, here, I'm actually just gonna show you. I wear these. These are just like detachable boobs, pretty much. They're soft, they're B cups, and <laughs> I wear them in a bra so that it looks like I have boobs. Um, but if I wear anything low cut and I bend over, they are, they are visible and I don't want them to be visible. So that would be the only reason for me to get a boob job or implants. <laughs> um, the problem is I, I don't know of a lot of cases, I mean, I've researched this, I don't know a lot of a lot of cases of, you know, women getting implants after having top surgery. I know that people get them post-mastectomy, but top surgery is different because you have nipple reconstruction as well. So I would wait until more research is done in this area as more detransitioners come out and get this, um, and then, you know, I'll be able to make that decision and find a reliable doctor, but I am in no rush to make that decision. It's very, it's a very long-term thing. Is Daisy your birth name or did you change it twice? Daisy is my birth name. If you could go back in time, what would you say to your younger self prior to transitioning? I mean, I would, I, I am tempted to say, you know, don't do it, you don't have to do this, um, but I don't know how changing that part of my life would, you know, change my current state because I'm very happy and with where I'm at, you can get through this. Just that. Did your opinion on the trans community change at all after detransitioning? My opinion on the trans community hasn't changed. I deeply care about trans people and I understand how, you know, some trans people might find that demeaning because I'm about to say, you know, has my opinion changed on transgenderism? Yes, it has. Um, I don't, I no longer think that gender identity is this immutable essence. Gender dysphoria can be dealt with in different ways that, you know, do not involve medically transitioning. And I honestly think that medical transition should be a last resort kind of thing. Um, but like trans community, like individuals, my opinion on, on them has not changed. I mean, I, I can't, I, I I deeply care about trans people. If you believe me, great. If you don't believe me, that's fine too, I guess. What am I currently reading? I am reading Motherhood by Sheila Hetty and It by Stephen King. I'm about halfway through It and I'm only 35 pages into Motherhood. Do you feel the need to intentionally dress femininely? Yeah. Kind of, um, I mean, I, I, my personal taste in clothing has actually progressively gotten more feminine. Um, I love androgynous clothing and I still do dress sort of androgynously. I mean, I don't wear men's clothing anymore because honestly, I feel like I can't really afford to do that with my voice and what have you. I mean, I wear makeup because I genuinely enjoy makeup. Like it is, it's a, it's an actual hobby that I've required. I really, I'm really interested in makeup genuinely. I'm not doing that, you know, just because I feel like I have to whatever, or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, I would like to be, I would like to be seen as a woman. I mean, I've gone over this and I've been criticized for this, but I would like to present myself and be perceived as a woman because I am a woman. How do you feel about Jordan Peterson now? And how does Jason? I um, still like Jordan Peterson. I have listened to a few of his um, interviews since he came back from his long hiatus and like, yeah, I still feel very motivated and inspired, honestly, when I listen to him talk about, you know, how to live your life. And I think a lot of what he says is very deeply true. Um, Jason, I, we've 
talked about this before, but I won't answer for him. So let me go ask him what he thinks about Jordan Peterson. Hi, Jason. Uh, Penny, for your thoughts on Jordan Peterson, please. <laughs> um, that's a that, that's a controversial figure to have to give um, Penny thoughts on. <laughs> yeah. And please, um, if you can, I know you're very verbose, if you could keep it down to like just two minutes. <laughs> I mean, we have this conversation a lot. I think that one thing I'm curious with him about is to what extent is his philosophy genuine? And that's not to say that I don't think he believes what he believes. I think it has to do with the fact that he has become such a public figure. Um, and that in, in, in certain instances, particularly with postmodernism, which he spends so much time railing about, it's hard to listen to him rail about it without being a little bit skeptical of how much he's read. Um, the only book I've heard him mention reading to do with it was a kind of, was an academic who spends their time trashing postmodernism as kind of nihilistic. And I think that that, like, it's not as if postmodernists identify themselves as nihilists. Um, so they're critical of different types of, like, they're critical of meaning as manufactured, but it's not as if they're necessarily like, advocating that we dispense with the idea of anything meaning anything altogether as we live our lives. So I think he's particularly weak on that point. Um, but that said, I think a lot of what he inherits from Young is meaningful and I think he has a, you know, he engages with his audience quite well on those points. I'm not super into mythical interpretation, but I don't think it's devoid of value. Um, politically, he, I think this kind of goes back to the disingenuous, the question about what the pub, what the what the being such a public persona has done. It's a big. I know I'm being verbose. It's okay. Um, it's a question mark for me. How much of how much of a niche he's fallen into, where the political stuff is part of participating in an IDW type like. We're this type of neo, we're this type of liberal neoliberal. We're defenders of classical liberalism type of mold. And I just, I think that sometimes he sounds on the side of, you know, cliched or just reiterating the kind of obvious point. Oh, free speech, great thing. Oh, it's really dangerous when this starts to go because it's a slippery slope. You fall into these things and I'm, I, it's hard not to roll your eyes at some of that because it lacks the nuanced, you know, how would the reasonable person who's left of that respond? It's usually, the, the paraphrased version of the criticism is usually significantly less nuanced than I think a lot of people like, say, ContraPoints would refute it with, if that makes sense. Is there something else I should touch on? No. <laughs> okay, cool. You I'll think stop. you got everything. I'll stop talking now. I love you. I love you too. Do you feel estranged from the trans community? Did you lose any friends over detransition? I didn't lose any friends over detransition. Uh, at least I don't think I did. Unfortunately, I do feel a little bit estranged from the trans community, and I feel like oftentimes my status as a detransitioned person uh, can be read as a threat, but it shouldn't be. Have you gotten your period again? Yes, I have gotten my period again. I got my period a month and a half after stopping testosterone. So I've been having periods for almost a year now um, after not having them for like five years. Would you have detransitioned if you didn't become a Christian? Yes, I think the decision to detransition was actually pretty separate from my faith, but the way it was connected was that um, once I decided to detransition, I then felt like I could start a relationship with God. Do you miss your own breasts? Yes. Yes, I do. I am very sad when I think about it. But, yeah, I actually cried over it for the first time not too long ago. Just, I was very overwhelmed with, you know, the irreversibility of it and the weight of the decision. Like, I amputated a healthy part of my body unnecessarily and I'm never going to get it back. Yeah, the finality of it and the irreversibility and the like kind of, I don't want to say craziness, but like 
I can't believe I did that, but I did. And it's, it just is what it is. In hindsight, is there anything you wish your parents had done differently on your journey? I mean, I can't really critique them very much. They were deeply horrified when I transitioned. Like, they did, they really tried to stop me from going on testosterone and getting top surgery. Um, I don't know. I can't really blame them for anything that they did. They, they didn't kick me out. They still loved me, they still had a relationship with me, but like, yeah, my transition was really, really, really hard on them and my relationship with them. And that's one of the reasons why I detransitioned, because I felt like, especially with my dad, I felt like this weird, like, disconnect from him when I was trying to be his son, because I knew that he would never see me as his son, but yeah, it was... I don't think I could ask them to do anything differently. I can't think of anything that I could say that really would be fair. If you never had gender dysphoria, then why did you decide to transition? Um, I didn't have physical dysphoria. I guess you could say I had a form of social dysphoria, which is a lot more complicated, I think, than physical dysphoria. And I eventually convinced myself that I had physical dysphoria because the my physical body, my physical attributes were what was keeping me from passing as a man. Uh, why did I decide to tra transition? Because I felt I had, I had a, I wanted to be a man. I wanted to be, ever since I was very young, I felt like I wanted to be a boy and it just seemed to make sense um, with the, you know, narrative surrounding what transgender is and how to know if you're transgender that like it seemed pretty obvious that I was transgender and once I could not be convinced that I was not transgender you know the way to alleviate gender dysphoria so I was told was to transition and so I transitioned how has your moods changed since detransitioning uh I am more prone to tears definitely and less prone to anger um I've been crying a lot more, and <laughs> um, I'm also on birth control. I've been been on birth control for almost a month now, and uh, that's flooding even more estrogen into my body. So yeah, I, it's, I've been uh, I've been emotional. What's my favorite flower? That'll be what we ended on. My favorite flower is not a daisy, actually. It's probably a lilac. I like lilacs. They're they're nice. Thank you guys so much for. Uh, asking me some good questions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.